Good afternoon, everyone. It's so great to see you all here. This is a fantastic crowd. And it's so heartening to know there's so many people in this room that care about entrepreneurs and communities. I want to give a special welcome to our 120 mayors who joined us yesterday for the first day of our Mayor's Conference in Entrepreneurship. I hope you've had a productive and inspiring experience so far, and I promise you there's more to come. And And to our ecosystem builders, more than 450 of you who arrived today, hello, welcome to Kansas City, and welcome to the second ASHIP Summit. You know, we are so happy that we can bring these two groups together, if even for a day, our mayors and our ecosystem builders, because even though we have different roles and we might come at our work from a little different perspective, at the end of the day, we're really all aimed at the same thing, and that is helping to create and nurture more vibrant, inclusive entrepreneurial communities. So in my brief time with you this afternoon, I'm going to answer two questions. And the first of those questions is, why does the Kauffman Foundation do what it does? Right? Why do we do what we do? And to answer that question, I'm going to tell you a little story. And the story dates back to the late 1940s. And it involves a young man named Ewing Kaufman, who had just returned to Kansas City from serving in the Navy during the Second World War. So Mr. Kaufman went to work for a small pharmaceutical company in sales. And it turns out he was a pretty darn good salesman. In fact, he was such a good salesman that in his first year on the job, he earned more in commissions than the company president's salary. So they responded by cutting his territory. Well, the next year, it happened again, and the response was the same. They cut his territory, so Mr. Coppin quit, and he never looked back, and he vowed he would never treat anyone like that. So, he started his own pharmaceutical company in the basement of his home with about $5,000 of his savings. Now, mind you, this was 1950, so a little bit before it was considered cool to have a startup in your basement, right? Um, and you can imagine how the rest of the story went. He grew this one-man shop into a global billion-dollar pharmaceutical giant that employed more than 3,000 people. So the Kauffman Foundation does what it does because our founder put us on this mission. He was a big believer in giving back, and he wanted to start a foundation that focused on the two things he thought were the most important in terms of his own success. One was the ability to get a quality education. He called it a ticket out of poverty. The other was entrepreneurship, the ability to strike out on his own and create something from nothing that provided a livelihood for himself and his family eventually, or initially, but then for thousands of other people that he employed eventually. So when I stitch those two things together, education and entrepreneurship, I like to think that the foundation is helping people to own their own destinies, equipping them with the skills and the knowledge and the tools so they can be self-sufficient and navigate their own choices in life, rather than having life make all the choices for them. Mr. Kaufman also believed that how you do something was just as important as what you do. So we approach our work with a great deal of humility. We know we don't have all the answers, so we need to listen and we need to learn. And this entrepreneurial communities work that we do is a perfect example of that, because we are learning so much from all of you because you're the ones who are out there in the communities, in the trenches every day doing this work. We also approach our work uh, with a greater amount of intention around diversity and inclusion. And that comes through in a number of ways. For one, we support dozens of wonderful organizations across this country that are working to lower barriers for women entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of color. Another way it comes through is through how we convene and who we convene. And you just need to look around this room to get a sense of what I'm talking about there. I am so proud that we have more than 600 participants here this week, representing all 50 states, Washington, DC, Puerto Rico, and 10 other countries. Half of you are women. A third of you are individuals of color. We have big cities represented, smaller cities, rural America, and everything in between. We have entrepreneurs. We have mayors. We have investors. We have community builders, we have economic developers, we have leaders of entrepreneurial support organizations, One Million Cups organizers, Fast Track affiliates. Uh, we have researchers, educators, it goes on and on. We know that the more diverse perspectives we have at the table, the stronger and more sustainable our collective work will be. So that's why the foundation does what it does. The second question I'll answer 
is why do, I do, why do I do what I do as the CEO of this foundation? And I have three parts to that answer. First, and quite simply, is I believe um, with all my heart in the mission of this foundation. I can't imagine two more important issues for us to be grappling with, or frankly for the nation to be grappling with, than educating our young people and providing entrepreneurship as a path to the American dream for people who want to take that opportunity. Second is I believe deeply in Mr. Kaufman's values. So I still feel a very strong sense of personal alignment about how the foundation does its work. And the third reason is I'm pretty passionate about the middle. And some of you might know that about me. And when I say middle, I mean that in a couple different ways. Of course, I mean geography, middle of the country. For me personally, I was born and raised in Kansas and Nebraska. And other than seven years out in Southern California, I've spent my life right here in the heartland. So it's important to me that this foundation helps people in the Midwest, which it does. But when I say middle, I mean something else. I mean kind of a way of being or a way of approaching life that really has nothing to do with where you live. I think of middle people as being practical, hardworking, common, everyday people that are attacking everyday problems and getting uncommon results. Right around this time last year, I was in Fargo, North Dakota, and I was giving, <laughs> yay Fargo, I was giving a TED Talk, coincidentally, about the middle. And while I was there, I met a woman entrepreneur named Edie. And Edie told me a story about how the Foundation's One Million Cups program literally changed her life and the course of her business. The way she described it is she was feeling really beaten down by the struggles of her startup. She was overwhelmed and she had just given up. In fact, she had made the decision to close her business and lay off her employees. And then kind of on a whim, she said because she had nothing better to do, she decided to go to this One Million Cups weekly meetup in Fargo that she'd heard about. So she attended and during that one hour gathering, she made powerful new connections she got some answers to some problems that she, that she thought were unsolvable, but most of all, she got inspired. She realized she wasn't alone and that there was this whole community out there that she didn't know about that she could lean on for support. So she went back home and not only did she not close her business, she put a down payment on a new facility and she hired more employees. Basically, she doubled down. And today, her business is thriving with international sales, and in fact, the product, the jewelry products that our company makes have been featured on the wildly popular TV series, Game of Thrones. So we all know an Edie, right? In fact, there are thousands and millions of Edies out there all over this country and all over the world, just like the ones you saw in that opening video. And for the most part, these folks aren't spectacularly famous or spectacularly rich, and maybe they're not spectacularly anything. They're just everyday makers, doers, and dreamers that are doing their thing in their communities. They're building solid, sustainable businesses that are employing people and adding value to our society. And that's important to me. I want to make sure our foundation supports these entrepreneurs. And that gives me inspiration and a really strong sense of purpose about why I do what I do for this foundation that I care about so much. So in closing, I want to ask you the question, why do you do what you do? I'd like you to reflect on that. And what is it that we can all do together that would be bigger and better than what any one of us could do on our own? And I'll leave you with a quote from Mr. Kaufman, just like I started, because I think it's a really powerful way to sum up the power of, of collaboration. And he said, all the money in the world can't solve problems unless we work together. But if we work together, there is no problem in the world that can stop us as we seek to develop people to their highest and best potential. I hope you make great new connections. I hope you exchange new ideas. And I hope you explore new ways to lower barriers for all the EDs out there. Thank you again very much for being here.